the reality is that we have always funded higher education based on simply enrollment. The number of seats that were held by students and basically some inflation and some equity adjustments and you received your amount of money. And so historically that's just how the base came about. Um, and when it became increasingly clear to us that we needed to talk about not just students getting to college, but students completing college, we looked at ways to do that. And we thought that one way to do that is to carve out a portion of your budget based on these performance metrics. Clearly, it's still a very small part of the historical base for funding for higher education, but in Indiana, it's now at a level where I believe that institutions and policymakers are interested in it even more because it starts to matter. We only developed a true community college system in 2005. The growth in that sector has been just dramatic. So they're struggling with this, this growth. 70% of their students needing remediation when they come there. Our research institutions are fairly stable, but they're trying to make sure that they can recruit the best talent and, and that their, their completion rates can be better. And then we have these regional campuses and four-year comprehensive institutions that look differently as well. So well, our goal when we did the metrics was to make sure that everyone could compete in at least five out of the six metrics in some way. But it depends on how much you put into each of those buckets. So how much do you incent research and how much do you put there? How much do you do what we called successfully completed credit hours, which tended to benefit the growing institutions the most? Um, so we had a meeting with the, the seven presidents and the governor to talk about performance metrics and actually talk about mission differentiation and how to do that. I think the challenge, uh, like any new idea, is to make sure people understand why you're doing it and what it actually means.